the worst thing is when you just don't know if it's windy at your beach or if it isn't. For this reason, we decided to place a Weatherflow Tempest weather station at our local kiteboarding spot. But there was a problem. We didn't have access to internet or even electricity. So we created a DIY setup so the weather station would work in a remote location. More on that in just a bit. Additionally, we were curious how accurate the wind forecasts were versus the actual readings. So we tracked that for over 40 days and the results surprised us. Finally, unfortunately, our weather station was hit by a hurricane. And the question was, did our setup survive? Normally to run a Tempest weather station, you would install a sensor in a suitable location and hook up the hub to a power outlet. The weather station and hub would communicate wirelessly with a distance of 1,000 to 6,000 feet. Additionally, the station's hub could connect to the internet via Wi-Fi, so you can view the station's data either through a web browser or the mobile app. But the location we decided to install the system, there was neither a power outlet or access to Wi-Fi internet. We had to rely on a cellular internet provider and a bunch of batteries. While it may sound simple enough, the reality is that this setup is full of challenges. The idea was to have two sets of batteries that would power up the hub for up to a week at a time. To power up the hub, we tried our existing power banks, but for whatever reason, they would shut off precisely after five minutes. Only one of our battery packs worked, and for the second one, we bought a hub power bank directly from Weatherflow for $50. It is advertised to last up to seven days, but from our tests, it lasted more like four to five days depending on the temperature outside. Nevertheless, this power bank is guaranteed to work, so we do recommend getting this one. When it comes to connecting the weather station to the internet, there's only one option, a mobile hotspot. Without doing proper research, we paid a retail price of $300 for this hotspot, but later realized you can get a similar unit on eBay for $30 to $50. The hotspot that we have has a built-in battery which lasts about 10 hours. But with an expendable battery, it works up to four days non-stop. Note that one of our batteries that we got from Amazon would stop charging the hotspot at random. We still haven't figured out why, but this battery will charge the hotspot until it completely discharges for up to three days. Speaking of internet plans, the cheapest plan you can get in Canada is $10 a month for 100 megabytes. However, the Tempest uses about 450 to 700 megabytes per month, which bumped us up to the next plan, which is $30 a month. Finally, to store all the batteries and the hubs, you need a box. We first tried this cookie tin that we had on hand. However, because it's made of aluminum, it blocked the cell signal. So we purchased a garden electrical utility waterproof box from Amazon for $30 and just hid it in the bushes. So that's our remote weather station setup. Let us know what you think or if you have any suggestions in the comments below. By the way, if you're interested in your own Tempest weather station, make sure to use the coupon code RKITELIFE for 10% off or click the link in the description. Now on to forecast versus reality. First of all, a quick warning. You should never compare weather forecasts to a single weather station as that's not what a forecast is. To better understand why, check out this video here. Long story short, the forecast is an area average, so an apples to apples comparison would be comparing the average from multiple weather stations across a given area to that area's forecast. But since there aren't enough weather stations around, especially in rural areas, it leads to inaccurate forecasts. And by the way, that's what makes a Tempest weather station unique. It's not just a weather station, it's a weather forecast solution as well. Since there are thousands of Tempest weather stations across the world, they all feed in information into the weather forecast, making forecasts much more accurate. In fact, with the new Tempest app feature, you can view a Tempest forecast for any location. We collected data for 44 days non-stop, where we saved a daily forecast from a WindFinder super forecast and compared it to our weather station readings. Our weather station was sitting roughly 10 meters above the water, which is equivalent to the model's 10 meter wind forecast. Adjusting for wind direction, excluding offshore, on average, it turned out to be three to eight knots windier than forecasted in July and the first half of August. Well, on July 26, the wind forecast was showing eight to 10 knots all day. However, in reality, we ended up getting 17 to 18 knots of wind all afternoon. Of course, local variations, thermals, and wind tunnels can dramatically affect the local conditions from the forecast. But having a properly placed weather station can increase your time on the water as compared to just relying on forecasts and eliminating any guesswork. Or, if anything, makes your guesswork a little bit more precise. So for the past few months, our setup was working fine, but then came the hurricane. Fiona was forecasted to hit us with full force. Nevertheless, we decided to leave the station at the spot as we were curious how windy it would get. We took before and after videos just two days apart. As you can see, the weather station didn't make it, but worse off, the local kite spot suffered severe erosion as a result of the hurricane, with the road being completely destroyed. The flagpole that we mounted to the station was bent 90 degrees, which resulted in the salt water and sand flooding the weather station. Thankfully, the waterproof box housing the hotspot and batteries survived the surge. 
Even despite the damage to the pole, we were quickly able to put the station together with the spare unit we had, so it was back up and operational. Sadly, the same cannot be said of the local kite spot. So was it worth it? Well, changing the batteries, especially when there's no wind, can be quite the hassle. We're thinking for next season to probably explore some small solar panels to power up the system. Nevertheless, having a weather station is a great time saver as you know when to head to the beach and when to skip it. That being said, when it's cold, especially below zero, the batteries will discharge within less than a day, making the whole thing impractical. For this reason, we'll be taking the weather station down for the winter. We're curious though, would you install a remote weather station? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. Thank you for watching.